Hello, welcome back to Men's Cinema. I hope you're all doing very well. Uh, for those of you who are as old as I am, I'd like you to think back to Christmas 1984, when two movies were released, kind of pitted against one another. Uh, first of all, we had Joe Dante's excellent, mischievous Gremlins. Uh, you see my little friend over here. And uh, also there's another movie which came out, which was called Ghostbusters. Both of them have been released in the summer of 1984 in America, but we got them at Christmas time, which seemed more appropriate because both films seem to have a bit of a Christmas feel about them, especially Gremlins, of course. And um, when you, you know, when you were a kid and those movies were at the cinema, it became one of those kind of pick your battles kind of things, you know, like, are you Blur? Are you Oasis? Uh, are you Gremlins? Are you Ghostbusters? And for me, I was always on the side of Gremlins. It was more my thing. I just loved their mischievousness. I, I think I was that little bit older, so I appreciated the horror humour as well. And Ghostbusters just seemed like a good film, but it just seemed like a silly comedy to me, and I didn't really invest that much into it. Um, you know, as the years have gone on, I still like Ghostbusters, but I'm still not that kind of diehard fan that you see out there that absolutely loves it and collects all the bits and bobs about it. So, um, yeah, I was, I was always just kind of a casual fan of Ghostbusters. Uh, that said, I did go and see the movies over the years. I saw, obviously, Ghostbusters in 84, and I saw the sequel in 89. And, um, of course, I saw the, the female Ghostbusters, I think it was 2016, that one. And then a few years ago, we had uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, of course, which brought back some of the key cast in the, the final scenes. And, uh, and now we are at Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Now, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire... Um, it, which opened at the cinema on Friday last week, Friday the 22nd, tells the story of um, the Ghostbusters that were in Afterlife. You know, um, you've got McKenna Grace's character and uh, Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon's character and Finn Wolhard's character. They've all moved to New York City and uh, they're now taking up residence in the old firehouse, which used to be the Ghostbusters headquarters back in that 1984-1989 movie. And... Um, they're kind of, you know, taking over the thing of uh, fighting ghosts in New York City. It opens with this spectacular scene of them all in the old Ecto-1, chasing through the streets, chasing this kind of Chinese, um, I think it's called a sewer dragon or something like that. But they're chasing that through the streets and trying to capture it with various devices. Things have moved up a little bit. We're no longer just using the old trap. It's got a trap, obviously, on wheels that we saw in the last movie. And we've also got uh, a trap as a drone in this, uh, in this circumstance. So it's all the case of chasing the ghost, catching the ghost. It's this great, exciting kind of opening sequence. Um, the, the story kind of moves on from there where there's this other character that comes along and he's got this orb and um, he brings it to Dan Aykroyd's shop and Dan Aykroyd owns this kind of mysterious, um, I think it's Ray's occult books and things like that. So he deals with occult books and he deals with mysterious items and things like that. And of course he takes care of it, looks after it and puts it to one side. And what this orb contains, it contains this major, major villain, um, which is the main villain of, of this movie. And, um, you know, should it get out or hell will break loose. And uh, what it does is if it, you know, eventually in the case of the movie, it does break out and it brings forward what might be another Ice Age. So um, that's that's kind of the basic plot of the film. It's up to our Ghostbusters to kind of get together um, with the original Ghostbusters, who, you know, those who are reigning. We've got Dan Aykroyd, uh, Ernie Hudson and Bill Murray to um, to take this entity on and obviously save the world once again. Um, the the problem that I found with Ghostbusters uh, Frozen Empire is for me it kind of it's kind of a, a a mismatched and a misshapen film. It starts off well with that opening sequence. It actually starts off with an earlier opening sequence, which is set in the I think it's the early 1900s or something like that, where you see this demon being kind of captured in the first instance. And then we flash forward to the future with that chase sequence in the Ecto One, and then things kind of plod for a bit. It just seems to kind of plod along, and you just need a a little bit more pace, a little bit more picking up, and a little bit more of the ghosts coming on earlier on in the movie. There just seems to be a lot of dialogue, a lot of the characters getting together. Um, there's a sequence with William Atherton, who was in the original movie. He was also in Die Hard as well. He played a similar kind of a character, you know, a bit of an asshole. And he's now the mayor of uh, New York City, and he's encountering these new Ghostbusters, and he's trying to shut them down. And uh, he tells McKenna Grace that she can't be a Ghostbuster because she's underage. She's too underage to be dealing with these kind of nuclear weapons kind of things. So, um, uh, so he kind of strikes her off the team and it's up to kind of Paul Rudd and Carrie Coon uh, to carry on being the Ghostbusters along with Finn Wolfhard. And so she kind of spirals off into her own side story where she kind of meets this entity and becomes friends with this entity and that kind of goes its own path. Um, you've also got, like I say, you've got... Um, this other character who comes in and brings the orb to the Ghostbusters. He gets involved. There's a new librarian that gets involved. The um, 
The problem with this film that I found, is, apart from the pacing and the part, you know, for the fact that it takes a long time to get anywhere, and then the third act is kind of stuffed full of action, stuffed full of the stuff that you wanted to see throughout the whole of the movie, is that um, it's overstuffed with characters. You, you've just got too many characters to concentrate on. You've got the original Ghostbusters, um, you know, Bill Murray, um, who kind of pops up in a cameo, really. He doesn't really do a whole lot in this film. He kind of pops up. Says a line, does his bit, disappears, pops up again, does another little bit, disappears, comes back for the end, kind of disappears again. Uh, Dan Aykroyd has got a bit of a meatier role in this film. He does a little bit more in this film. He's, he's a lot more involved with the plot, a lot more involved with the storyline and moving forward and the and the devices. Obviously, he's the expert on all these old ancient devices now. Uh, and Herney Hudson does a great deal in this film as well. So um, you've got those to deal with. You've got our new Ghostbusters to deal with. Um, you've got McKenna Grace. McKenna Grace's character um, has to deal with her side story, so you've got that to deal with as well. You've got the the regular Ghostbusters going out doing their thing, trying to solve the problems and chasing other ghosts around. There just seems to be um, sorry, and there's um, also you've got Patton Oswalt's weird kind of librarian character, and um, I think it's Kamal Najani. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's playing the guy that's bringing the the orb into Razor Cult Bookstore. And he's kind of like the gatekeeper from the original movie. He's the, I think he's called the fire keeper or something like that. Um, so you've got his story as well. Um, my problem with this movie is that it was overstuffed with characters and none of them really had a decent enough plot to carry that through. You can do it in a movie, you know, we've seen it with Avengers Endgame and Avengers, um, you know, the other Avengers films where you've got multiple characters, where they've got something to do, keeps the plot moving forward and it doesn't feel over convoluted. Um, but in this one, there just seem to be way, way too many characters to concentrate on and not enough plot to give them to make them worthwhile. Actually, Finn Wolfhard's character kind of sits on the sidelines a lot of the time and he doesn't seem to have any character development whatsoever. He just kind of pops in and does his bit and then moves on. Uh, that said, visually, it's a very enjoyable film. It's a lot of fun to look at. Um, you know, there's lots of the usual Ghostbusters things you expect. There's a lot of the lot of throwbacks to the original movie as well. We've got our old pal Slimer back in the picture as well. So it's nice to see him there. And um, obviously you've got the mini um, Marshmallow Men that you saw in the last film, they're back for this movie as well. And of course William Atherton from the original movie who kind of is continuing to play Walter Peck as a bit of a, a nasty kind of uh, sarcastic kind of character. Um, it, it does again very much remind me of the original movie, it hits tones from the original movie, but it's just not as good. I felt, um, I was questioned when I came out of the cinema, you know, what did I think? And I thought, that, uh, it's a strange thing to kind of answer because I felt 50-50. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I felt like it was missing something. I felt that the pacing was off and I felt that there was too many characters, as I said just then, to kind of develop into a decent movie. I, I think it needed the edges kind of rounding off and the, the script kind of giving another going over and kind of moving scenes around to kind of give it a better pacing, give you a better build up to what the final act is. Um, the villain itself, I didn't think was that great. I didn't think it was that memorable. It kind of just kind of wafted in, put its sticky horns on and went like this and made everything frozen. Um, so yeah, the villain was a little bit weak as well. That said, you know, it's an enjoyable movie for if you love your Ghostbusters movies. Um, like I say, I'm not a dedicated fan, so I didn't feel that invested in it. Um, but yeah, it's an enjoyable film. It's one of those ones that's going to lead us into the summer blockbusters that are to come. So it's, uh, you know, I would still recommend that you go and see this one at the cinema. I think you'll have a good time with the visuals. I think you'll have a good time with some of the characters. And of course, Bill Murray popping up being uh, Peter Venkman and being sarcastic again. So um, out of 10, I would say, I mean, I kind of want to give this a 6 out of 10, but I'll give it a 7 out of 10 to be generous because um, they did, you know, the rest of the film does look really good. It's a lot of fun. So um, it just needed everything tightening up. I think it could, I think my disappointment is that it could have been a better film. I think one more script revision, a um, lot more tightening of the scenes, a lot more tightening of the action, better development for the characters, and we could have had a really great Ghostbusters film on our hands. But as it is, we've just got a good one. Um, whether they'll go forward with another one after this, I don't know. I would hope so. I'd hope that they'd be able to kind of learn their lessons from this one, tighten everything up, and bring us back to the kind of the the kind of Ghostbusters movie that we should be getting in this day and age. But yes, um, yeah, let's go 7 out of 10 on this one. Go and see it at the cinema. Have a great time with it. And uh, that's the end of my review for Ghostbusters or Frozen Empire, I'm afraid. Um, again, thank you very much for everybody that's been tuning into my other channel, which is Mancini Pictures Limited, where you can see a ghost story of my own over there. Guilty Conscience is doing pretty well over there. Everybody's viewing it and everybody's liking the video, which is great. Um, please do go and like those videos. Please do go and subscribe to that channel. Um, we've got a couple more bits coming up, um, but then I'm going to run it of my own little films, which means I have to go off and make some new ones. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching that. Thank you for watching this video. If we can go through the old routine, 
please click on the thumbs up. It really does help this channel out. Um, I know it's the Thumb Bandits climbing over onto the other channel. They're strange little things, aren't they? They're kind of like the little creatures in Ghostbusters, the little marshmallow men. They're mischievous and a bit, a bit thick, really. Um, so, yeah, click on it this way up. Don't be a Thumb Bandit. Please subscribe to the channel if you're brand new to my channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit the notification bell and let you know when I've done another one. And uh, I will see you all on the next. See you all soon. Take care.